I chose to become an entrepreneur, quite frankly, uh, because I wanted to do things that are simply not possible in, in, in the in large institutions that, that currently exist. If you get right down to it, we are socialist countries. It's command and control from the top. Being an entrepreneur doesn't mean you have to create your own company. You can be an entrepreneur within uh, an existing company. And frankly, you know, I say this to anyone, try that first because building a company is very painful. If you come in a culture that has, over the last 20 years, is a very socialist culture and there's command and control, you cannot have that entrepreneurship. And, and, and I needed it to build what I wanted to build. So that's why I became an entrepreneur. Sometimes um, even leaders and, and investors need to get, know when to get out of the way. An example is myself. I co-founded Safar and I was the first employee and first CEO for six years. By 2007, I realized that, that my leadership role was not the correct role to be CEO. And for the company to continue to grow, I needed to get out of the way and allow one of my other partners who had joined full-time to take over. So I stepped down voluntarily as CEO to become the chief investment officer. And actually, myself and my partner got in a big argument because no, neither one wanted to be CEO, which was very strange because the board was confused. They're used to people fighting to become the CEO. But, but learning to get out of the way, even your own way, is just as important as asking government or, or big uh, companies to, 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 to get out of the way. In terms of the role of the government, uh, I'd say that, that, that mostly one would like them to get out of the way. So how do you do that? By getting, scrapping a lot of these arcane laws and putting in. I think the biggest problem is not that there's certain laws that get in the way of things. It's not clear what what the actual law is or the interpretation is. We want government to stop competing with the private sector. Um, and fine, they have a lot of financial resources, but there's no eff efficiencies there. And, and we've seen it over and over again. I mean, one of the things about the, the collapse that started in late 08 is it's shown that the massive financial resources of the government has been hiding inefficiencies, operational inefficiencies of these companies. They've got to get out of the way. Uh, and, and if the government wants to some stimulate certain sectors, sure, deploy the financial resources, but in a competitive manner across many, many uh, uh, private sector uh, uh, operating companies. We still haven't um, separated uh, social culture from business culture. So in social culture, failure is seen as, as, as it's driven by shame. It's a shame we have a shame culture. That's a problem. Also, in the way you interact, you don't go and ask for things, really. Uh, that's, that's also part of the shame, shame culture. You keep it within the family. But that's not how business works, especially entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, you have to go get these resources. It starts with money, it starts, then there's people getting the contracts. And, and if we don't see a separation between um, the social and the business, we'll con continue to face uh, these issues. VC, in some sense, is not new. Um, the family businesses have been doing it over and over again. Uh, you know, come work for me, and they act as incubators over and over and, and over again. Uh, and, and not just financial resources, by providing administrative support and so on. So it's been there. What we've got to do now is separate the actual entrepreneurs from the businesses, uh, because you have to let them go. You, they will be. They are suffocating in the large family businesses. And if if we create the right culture, that that will work. And 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 again, now that everyone's gotten away from the late stage uh, quick flip uh, on the private equity side, uh, we're seeing more and more uh, attention uh, to to the uh, VC in early stage. We should see that evolve more. They're very different areas, different economies, different uh, different peoples. Really, uh, everyone says you know Arab, but that's just the common language. And even then, you know, the, 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 
if, if, if the, the dialects can be quite, quite different. And then you have different types of resources. You know, the Levant is a human resource rich. Uh, the Gulf is, or the GCC is, um, of course, financial resource rich. Um, so what, what, what I believe is that these two can work together. Uh, so I, I wouldn't call it a divide, there's a difference now. The, the trick here is, is how do you make that work for you? And, and if you can figure out how to marry those. It's this mix of, of how do you get it right, how do, you, how do you find the right talent pool, how do you find the right financial resources, and putting it all together. And the fact that there might be one center here and a different center there shouldn't work against you. You just, you just need to figure out how to make it work for you. our portfolio of companies, successful ones, everybody wants a piece of them. So we're, we, we can exit those. You should have pretty clear ideas of, of, of what an exit might look like. But really, again, we found that what you need to focus on is building a great company. You build a great company and there's a long line of, of people coming and many, all the options are open for exit. Trying to drive towards a specific exit, if we don't have the right company, have built a great company, nothing's going to help you. Thank you.